Hey, yes, everyone. Welcome to Coast Lesson 10. We're going to have a look at coastal management. Again, I've put a worksheet up on show my homework for you to follow along with. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is going to just go through this question from the end of last lesson. So what is the difference between primary effects and secondary effects? So we were looking at erosion. So the ideal um, answer would be in terms of erosion. So a primary effect results as a direct result of erosion. So things like landslides, mud flows, rock fall, okay, they all happen because erosion has happened. So the sea erodes the coastline and the rock becomes weaker and falls. That is a direct result of that erosion. A secondary effect happens as a result of the primary effect. So for example, the sea erodes the coast, the cliffs weaken and the rock, fall, the rock collapses, the cliff collapses. Well, if there's a house on top of that cliff, the house might fall as well. But the house, the loss of the house is a secondary effect because it's actually the cliff that collapses that's a primary effect. So because the cliff collapsed, the house was lost as well. Or it could be that erosion has caused a landslide and that landslide has destroyed um, and covered a farm and therefore the primary effect is the landslide, the secondary effect is the loss of the farm. Quite a lot of you um, googled the answer and if you do google the answer it normally uses earthquakes as an example. So as the primary effect is a direct result of the ground shaking in terms of an earthquake and the secondary effect is a result of that primary effect. So for example the ground shaking might cause the buildings to collapse and the secondary effect might be that um, because the building collapsed, it causes a fire. Okay, but with this one, I just want you to make sure that you understand it in terms of erosion. Okay, so let's have a look at coastal management. So first of all, we need to understand who is actually in charge of coastal management. So the government actually don't have a legal duty um, for coastal defences. It's a responsibility of the local councils to prepare what's called a shoreline management plan for their coastline. So whoever the local council is on that coastline that might need protecting, they're in charge of determin determining if it's worth it. So what the council needs to consider if they um, want to defend an area or if they think they need to defend an area, they need to consider how many people are at threat. So how many people perhaps live um, along the coastline or work or the businesses are there. What is the land or the property worth? How much would it cost to replace the infrastructure? So the roads, the railways, the power lines, if they were lost. Are there any historical and natural features that should be conserved? So are there, is there anything that should be protected? Does the area have an economic value? So does, for example, it bring in tourists and that links with boosting the economy? So they're all things that the council needs to consider um, when, they, when they're weighing up to defend an area. So how can we protect our coast? There are two types of engineering um, that we use to protect our coast, um, which we'll go through. And then all the strategies that we use are within one of these um, types of engineering. So the first one is hard engineering. So hard engineering is um, man-made and it often requires like machinery, a lot of materials. Um, it's involving the construction of significant man-made structures. It can be quite expensive as well. Um, it's not very natural, it's not very environmentally friendly. Whereas soft engineering involves the construction of more environmentally friendly or less damaging and arguably more sustainable management solutions. They require um, less man-made structures and are also normally quite a lot cheaper as well. So we're going to go through um, the different strategies and like I said they're all within either hard engineering or soft engineering. So you can have a think whether you think it's hard engineering or soft engineering and then complete the table on the worksheet or just draw your own table and write it in. So the first one is a seawall. So seawall you can see here it's um, a concrete or a rock barrier that's built at the foot of cliffs or the top of the beach. It has a curved face to reflect the waves back to sea and it's usually between three and five meters high. Now this is a man-made structure, it requires a lot of um, material, so concrete, it'll require machinery to build. Um, some of the disadvantages are it's, it's expensive, it's not very natural to look at, it costs a lot to maintain. 
if you've ever been to Blackpool, you might have seen the seawalk Blackpool and, it, and some of the advantages are that it can have a walkway or a promenade for people to walk along and that's the case at Blackpool. So there are advantages and disadvantages to all these um, coastal management strategies. So the next one is called a groin, you can see it in the image there. So a groin is either made out of um, timber, so wood or rock, and it's built for, out to sea from the coast. The coast is up here, you can see the cliffs there. And basically it's just like a wall that's built out to sea. And what this does, it traps the sediment that's being moved by longshore drifts. So remember, longshore drifts moves um, material along the coastline um, in a zigzag pattern. Um, so what this does, it just drop, uh, traps the beach material and allows the beaches to develop. So this is another hard engineering strategy. It requires um, a man-made structure to be built. So basically it acts as a buffer to incoming waves and reduce wave attack on the coast. So it tries to reduce erosion and the movement of material. Now the disadvantages of this is that it can stop other beaches from building up, so therefore cause more erosion um, elsewhere along the coastline. So it might be that the problem's not actually solved, but it's just shifted somewhere else. Can be unattractive unless it's made from a more natural looking material like wood, and it can block people from going for walks along the beach, so obviously. It's quite difficult to get over. So the next one is rock armour. So again, you can see it on the image. So rock armour are just piles of large boulders that are dumped at the foot of the cliff. The rock forces the waves to break, so therefore it takes away the energy of the waves and protects the cliffs. So it takes away the energy of the waves, so the waves haven't got any energy to erode. Um, it uses barges to transport the boulders um, by the sea. So advantages, it's cheaper than a sea wall. It's more natural looking than other hard engineering methods, but it is still a hard engineering method and it lasts a long time. Disadvantages, it can be expensive to get, the trans to get and transport the boulders. So where these boulders come from, how do they get there? It can block views and take up some of the beach and it can be dangerous to people climbing on them as well. So that is another hard engineering strategy. Okay, so let's go on to so some soft engineering. So beach nourishment. This is an example of a soft engineering strategy. So if you can see this image here, this sort of ship machine out at sea is called a dredger. So what this dredger does, it picks up material from the sea floor, so sand and sediment material from the, from the sea floor that's been eroded, and pumps it back onto the beach. So it adds sand or shingle to the beach to make it higher or broader. So it's building up the beach and the sediment is usually from local areas that blends with existing beach material. So it's the same um, sort of material and doesn't look out of place. So it's, it looks more natural. It blends with the existing beach. A bigger beach can attract more tourists. It's not taking the um, sediment from other areas, it's taking it from the local area and it can be quite cheap and easy to maintain. Some disadvantages are that it needs constant maintenance. So whereas an example of a sea, uh, a sea wall, it might not need as, it does still need maintenance, but it might not need as much maintenance. Whereas this needs constant maintenance to stop that um, erosion taking place and to replenish the beach. So unless groins are installed, the sand will still erode away again. So if, this, if the sand just keeps eroding away, obviously it needs even more maintenance to keep it up. And the next one is also a soft engineering strategy. So you've got managed retreat. So this is where areas of the coast are allowed to erode and flood naturally. So they're not necessarily protected, but they know they're not protected. Um, so usually this er these areas will be considered low value. So places not being used for housing or farmland, so they might not ha have very much economic value. Um, advantages, it's a cheap option compared with hard engineering. It creates habitat for wildlife, so it's left in its natural state. It allows the processes to take place naturally. Disadvantages, the land will be lost as it's flooded by seawater and eroded as well. Farmers or landowners will need to be paid for the loss of land. So, for example, if someone owns a farm or a land um, in the area that's being left to erode and flood, then they will need to be paid compensation for that. So that can obviously be quite costly. 
and people's houses could fall or, uh, into the sea as well. Okay, so I've just gone through some hard and soft engineering methods and I want you to um, write your notes in the table, but then there are a few others as well. So there's gabions, sand dune regeneration and salt marsh creation. So as a bit of an extension and research activity, I want you to find out about these other methods. What are they? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? And then which methods do you think are the most effective at protecting the coastline? You need to be able to explain why. So pick just six methods. Um, you can use the ones that we went through or you can even use the ones you researched and put in the top of the triangle, the most effective, and then two that you think might be quite equally effective, um, but not the most effective, and then the three least effective. Okay, you need to be able to explain why you've chosen the most effective. So underneath, perhaps you can write down why you've chosen that as the most effective. And then these are just some of the types of coastal defences already used in the Holderness area. So you can take a look at this, you can pause it and go through it. Um, but basically, there's seawalls and groins um, around Flamborough Head. There's groin, wooden groins and a seawall at Hornsey. And it was built in the early 1900s, but then repair, repaired in the 1980s. So remember, they need repairing. They're not going to be there forever. There's rock groins um, at Mappleton, revetments at Mappleton, and the total cost um, of the sea defences in 1991 in Mappleton was 1.9 million. So you can see how much these sea defences cost. At Within Sea, you've got groins a sea rock, uh, and a sea wall. At Spain Head, where the spit is, there's a small concrete wall, um, but it needs repairing. There's concrete blocks and wooden groins as well, but again, they've not been um, maintained. Okay, then just something else for you to think about. Explain how conflicts may arise over coastal management. Consider thoughts of residents, tourists, businesses, and owners, and business owners and farmers. So, for example, if you as a resident, would you want your coast to be uh, coastline to be protected. So if you live right on the coast, on the cliff edge, would you want that coast to be protected? How would you want it to be protected? Would you want to look out onto a sea wall every day? Or would you want something more natural, um, like beach replenishment, beach nourishment? If you was a tourist, would you be happy with rock armour all along the beach? Um, so just have a think about how might conflicts arise, how might disagreements arise over coastal management? Okay, if you've got any questions, um, just send me a message and show my homework. And thank you for watching.